Welcome to the capstone project for our interaction design specialization. I'm here today with Mike Krieger, who is a former student of mine who came out of our HCI curriculum. And uh, Mike went on to co-found a small company you may have heard of called Instagram. And so welcome, Mike. Thanks Thank for you. being here. Good to be here. And um, you worked with us to design this capstone project. And so I was curious a little bit about um, tell us your experience starting Instagram. How did that happen? When I think about Instagram, so I co-founded it with my uh, friend Kevin beginning of 2010, and the process of getting to launch and, and starting out with a very different product is one that, you know, I tell the story often, but thinking about it through a design lens, what we had built is the wrong product at first. We built this product called Bourbon, and it was well laid out, had nice graphic design, nice visual design, but the actual product was wrong. So we'd gotten something wrong further upstream. And the problem was it was too complicated and we'd show it to people and we'd have people use it. So we'd get people out in the real world and have them try it. And over and over again, I realized that they just couldn't grok why they would be useful in their lives. We just missed on that need finding front. Um, so the process of creating Instagram and making it useful was two part. One was realizing we'd made something too complicated and drastically simplifying it and going back to understanding what people really wanted to do with this product. But the second part um, was also realizing once we'd simplified, what were the real needs within that space? So all of Instagram was built on that principle. So it was three main needs that we, we'd identified. Photos looked really ugly coming out of people's cameras in 2010. We had iPhone 2Gs and cameras were nowhere near where they are today on mobile phones. Uh, number two was that it was really easy, it was really hard to share across multiple networks. So people had this fragmented experience where they wanted to share to Facebook and Twitter, and we had this third network. We wanted to make it super simple to tap three times and share to three networks really easily. And the third one was it took forever to upload because a lot of people were uploading full res, three megapixel photos on you know edge network connections. So we spent a lot of time focusing on speed and optimization. So all of what we worked on at Instagram, we had a rule every week that if a project or a task wasn't focused on one of those three things, we wouldn't work on it. And that's how we got to launch. Because it's very easy at a startup to get lost in that process of, well, we could add this thing and then add this thing. And anything that didn't fit the bill on one of those three things, we would cut. Um, and that's how we got to launch. And actually, once we decided to focus, it took us less than three months to build the first version of Instagram and get it out the door. Because we'd learned a lot from the previous year um, and because we simplified a lot. That that focus is so important. So. You've got uh, an undergraduate degree and a master's degree in human-computer interaction. Um, is that stuff relevant in the real world? Uh, what, what have you found that you've used or not used in terms of interaction design and HCI? Yeah, totally relevant. I, I always talk about my co-founder and I, neither of us have straight CS backgrounds. I have an HCI background um, with some cognitive science thrown in. He has a management science uh, degree with some CS thrown in as well. So, you know, we both come at from a different perspective. He was really good at the business side, raising money, um, and I brought the HCI side of things to the table. And part of what that meant was when we built product, instead of getting caught up in code instantly, we had a rule that we would sketch every single thing out before we built it. So we sketched whole features and threw them away in the early days of Instagram. There was a whole gifts feature that we built on paper over an afternoon um, at the cafe across the street and finally we're like, like this actually doesn't seem to resonate with either of us um, and we threw it out. Um, so very much that process of understanding that you know you can't start a product by just building it, you have to understand what you're building. So in that need finding stage and as the company has grown and as our user base has grown over 300 million people, the gap between what's in our head and what's in our user's head widens and widens and widens on a bunch of dimensions. They're no longer uh, our age, necessarily. They're not, they'll no longer have our same uh, context. They're in different countries. They use different phones. They're on different network conditions. So the real value, I think, over time of, of continuing to use the design process today is uh, building empathy for the next 300 million people using Instagram. And it's, a, it's the only way you can do that. I think if you try to guess, you'll usually get it wrong. So you found that a, uh, an afternoon in the sketchbook can save you a year of software development yeah. by being able to, to think things through. That, that totally makes sense. So students who are in this capstone have completed several courses by this point, and now they're actually going to get to put it all together and do a, a sequence of projects that we've worked on. When they've completed this human-centered design sequence of need finding and prototyping, evaluating with users, Will they have the skills to be able to be a real interaction designer or start a company like you did? 
I think the biggest bit that should flip after going through the capstone project and, and walking through it with Scott, it's very much the kinds of things we think about around starting broad, identifying needs, like starting to converge, and then going broad again on thinking about different ideas, thinking about different ways of solving the problem, is it should hopefully flip the bit about how you approach a lot of things in life. So yes, the capstone is a really specific example, but once you start thinking that way, it's, it's a little bit of a disease because you can't stop thinking about it that way, but everything from, you know, how would you design, I'm, I'm engaged, I'm about to get married. So we're thinking very much in a design-centered way around how we're doing our wedding ceremony or our whole weekend and what the experience design is of, of receiving the gift and what, what needs do people have coming into the wedding. And it's a whole approach of looking at problems and at people. Um, and I think going through the process in a more formal way where you understand each step is really valuable because then you can start picking and extracting each of those little parts kind of like we did at Instagram and when I look at Instagram over time we've gotten more formal about our design process rather than less. In early days we could get away with yeah like we'll just you know do the simple thing and we kind of know what we're trying to build because we are the users um, and nowadays I take something like Layout which we've launched recently um, as a separate product um, I you know the entire success of that product, and it's done very well, it's one of the top apps in the store right now, um, came from being really design-centric and human-centric with how we approached it. So, so what is Layout? So Layout is a uh, collage app that you can use to combine multiple photos, which people were already doing with a bunch of different products out there in the market. Um, but we didn't think any of the products solved that particular problem particularly well. Um, so we set out to build a better uh, build a better collage app, which sounds trivial maybe, um, but we decided to do it in a really intentional way. So the two main things we did, we went really deep um, on quantitative research. So we said how people are already sharing these types of things on Instagram. We get about 80 million photos a day, a bunch of them are actually these types of collages. Let's dig in and say, what's different about these collages? We learned a lot of them have faces. Um, which was different than most Instagram photos, which might be of things um, rather than people. Um, we learned that mostly teenage girls make them. That's like the thing that they love building. So we felt like we knew our target audience now or knew who they were, and we knew the content of them. And then what we did is that we started prototyping based on those insights, um, a tool that um, would let you do this. And one of the core insights we learned very early on in getting real people in the lab, and we do weekly uh, user research studies at Instagram where we bring real people into the lab and, and try out things with them, uh, is uh, every, all the other apps were getting the order backwards. So you would choose a frame or a set of, you know, the configuration of your photos, then choose the photos. You realize what people actually wanted was to pick a bunch of photos and then see a bunch of the configurations that would work. Uh, so that kind of might seem like a small design insight actually totally changed around what the app looks and works and how it works. And when people dive in the first time, you can see their eyes light up like, ah, this is what I wanted. It's just all these other things were getting it wrong. Um, the faces insight we also brought into the product and one of the views you can say, see is not just your photo library, but photo library, but only with p pictures of people, which the capability is built into both iOS and Android now. And again, another delightful moment where people said, ah, I do want to make a collage of my friends, and I can tap faces and just see all my friends at once. So every stage of that product development, including the final one, which was getting it ready for launch, was validated, informed and validated by really engaging with our target audience, talking to them, the, the name we validated against it is this sound like what you would call this thing. They're like, collages aren't cool. Like, that's what you do with scrapbooks. Like, call it something else. We're like, how about layouts? So like, that sounds cool. Let's, make, let's call it that. Um, and the, we were able to ship that app with a lot of confidence uh, because of the entire human centered design process that had led up to shipping it. That's cool. And what advice do you have for students going through this set of capstone projects? You know, now you're an executive and you mentor a lot of designers. What are things that people, if they're not paying attention, can easily get wrong? And what things should they focus on? One of the things that has most stayed with me when I think back to our classes, when I, the class I took with you at Stanford, was the amount of getting out of the building and really interacting with people. So you can do these assignments, like if you commit, really commit to a lot of these assignments and you go out and you try to find strangers that actually match the target demographic you're going after, that fit one of your personas, you will have a much more fulfilling uh, experience. And I think about that with our designers too. There's some that come into design review and are like, well, you know, I, 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 I think this is an interesting prototype. I, I checked with one other designer. It's okay. The other ones that are like, look, I, I tried these three variations. I won't show you like the 10 other ones I threw away. I grabbed somebody who happened to be here for user research and they validated it then. And I think this is right. Like really committing and it, it you know, it can feel scary to get out and like expose your ideas to the world and interact with often strangers. But they were my most memorable experiences in HCI and they still today are the ones that inform the best designs because you have to get out of your head and into the world. 
It's amazing how when you try out designs with users, uh, like the first time it can be so frustrating that people don't see what's obvious to you as a designer. And often you want to skip the step of bringing people in because you're like, well, okay, we got this part figured out, so it's obviously going to work. Uh, and then they just like, you watch somebody use it and they can't see the button that's right there in front of you. And then you change just a few things and all of a sudden it really sings and there's such an adrenaline rush when you when you get it and it works. Totally. I remember one time we got it wrong and didn't follow <laughs> enough of a design process was uh, in one of our versions we changed the, the filter selector on Instagram from being one where you swipe and then tap on the one you wanted to one where every time you swiped that currently centered filter was the one that would filter your photo if that makes sense. And for us in testing it, we were just flicking through and testing the UI all worked, it all worked mechanically, and we shipped it and people hated it. And the reason is the behavior they had is that they would like to compare two filters. So they choose one, scroll to the other one, look at it for a second, choose the other one, scroll back and do that comparison. And all of a sudden you couldn't because the second you scrolled, all your work would go away. And we ended up reverting the change and going back. One thing you have to learn is also when you make mistakes, how to revert them. Um, but that was very clearly if we had brought some people into that design, earlier before shipping, they would have felt, oh, this doesn't match how I actually like using the product.